It's Diddy King. Guess what? Today is a special day. Why is it a special day? It is a special day because we are about to do Van Talk Episode 1. I want to say huge shout out to everybody who put a comment in the community post. Also, I really appreciate all the love and support from everybody who watched the channel, who liked the videos, who subscribed to the channels, everybody who was part of the Triple C's. Huge shout out to everybody. Even also, huge shout out to the haters and the debaters. And huge shout out to also the congratulators. I really appreciate all the love and support. And we are about to get it in. Episode 1 of Van Talk. I'm here to answer y'all questions, baby. Let's do it. Okay, so question number one from at rapid 99 they said have you ever considered on meeting small business owners around your area to do a couple of runs for them huge shout out to you for that question honestly we have actually went to multiple different small businesses and gave them our business card no one has called us yet i just want to tell you guys this i know a lot of you guys may be thinking that it's sweet and you're just gonna walk in get a van go to these small companies go here go there it is gonna be that ain't usually how it go a lot of times these people, they already have the people that they use or they maybe have their own van. And even if they're doing bad business, for some odd reason, people are not, like they don't like change. So even if someone is doing bad business or doing something incorrectly, they're still gonna go with them over going with a new person because they already know what they're dealing with. I don't know why they do that, but that's just how it is, baby. But huge shout out to you for asking that question. I really appreciate it. Okay, question number two comes from Off Topic Comma. Uh, what are your plans on expanding your business? Are you eventually looking to add more drivers or get a dedicated route? That's a great question. I, I get this question all, all the time. First off, for the, for the dedicated route, absolutely not, baby. Now, I'm not going to do a dedicated route because I don't want to do it. I don't want to be getting out, in and out the van 50,000 times. But I will say this. I do... I will do like a one pick, one drop. Like if I had an everyday thing where I went to this one place and then drop it off uh, at another place every single day, I'd be cool with that. Like one pick, one drop. But I also would want it to be way early in the morning. I wanted to be out there like picking it up at four o'clock, dropping it off by five or something like that. So we can do the gig gaps, you know, really gonna kick in around 520 and all that stuff. So that's the only way I would do it. So I would not do a dedicated route. Now, as far as hiring drivers, Look, man, I'm just going to tell you guys the honest to God truth. I have trust issues with people, man. People, they're not going to take care of your stuff. How are you going to take care of it? They're going to mess up stuff. They ain't going to come in. They're going to think that they're doing... It's like, it's, it's a lot to deal with people who are running like a full, like full-blown business. You have to really, you know, pick the right people. And I'm kind of skeptical on people because some people say, hey, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. But then, you know, they don't come and then some stuff happened to my baby mama, cousin, uncle, sister, brother. I ain't had no way to get to work. It's just all types of stuff. And am I willing to deal with that versus not having to deal with it? I do think we have thought about some different things that I will maybe tell you guys later on how we can expand and do different things. But as far as somebody working for us, I don't... I don't know if I'm going to do it. I'm just going to be honest with you guys. I may, we may, I'm just going to tell you right now. We have talked about maybe getting another van or something, a box truck or something like that, and allowing people to use it. Like they pay us a, a fee and then they use the van or use the box truck. Um, also, they have something, I, I found about th found out about this on my guy, Mark the Mentor channel. They have something called Bell Hopper, where you, all you got to do is provide this, the, uh, you, all you got to do is provide the box truck. You get the box truck. You take it to um, wherever the pickup location is. The workers, they load everything. So all you do is bring the box truck, sit it there, they load everything, and then you drop it off, and then they unload it. So you don't do anything. You just have the box truck with the DOT and all that stuff. So that's another thing that we kind of thought about. Okay, so they also asked, what are your 2024 goals and expectations for yourself? So let's go ahead and get into it. For the end of 2023, we need to be at 100,000 subscribers. That's the first thing. We need to get there first. For 2024 and 2025, I need at least like a quarter million subscribers, 250,000 subscribers. I know you guys can do it, baby. All you got to do is smash the subscribe button and also tell a friend to tell a friend to join to join the, the triple C's, baby. Also start smashing that like button. Now, as far as monetarily, I do think I need to invest way more. I, I have invested a good amount, but I need to invest way, way, way more to get where I really want to be. I'm trying to be my full self by the time I get 40. I'm talking about a full capacity. I'm talking about I'm having big acres, big properties, all that stuff. So in order for me to do that type of stuff, I do need to invest more. 
I have been investing a good amount. We got the Bitcoin, we got some Ethereum, we got some XRPs, we got some um, we got some other stuff that I'm that I'm working on and investing in too. But that is like my biggest goal to be financially free and also to retire my mom. That's one of my biggest, 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 biggest goals. Retire my mom. I've been writing this down on my goals for a long time now, and I need to retire her. And I know what I need to do to do it, but I got to get there first. So, huge shout out to you for that question. Excellent question. Question number three comes from Motown YB, and they are asking, do you plan on mixing in some Cars and Cribs content, or is it just the title of your channel? Huge shout out to you for that question. That's a great question. I get this question all the time. Why is it called Cars and Cribs? Why is it called Cars and Cribs? What is Cars and Cribs? You ain't doing nothing with no Cars and no Cribs. Huge shout out to you for the question, but... I'm gonna tell you guys this. The reason why the channel is called Cars and Careers is because we first started off doing house reviews. If you don't know, you're new to the channel, I am a real estate, well, B and my partner are real estate agents in Wisconsin as well as Illinois. So we used to do house reviews every day. I'm gonna give you a little backstory. Before we even did house reviews on YouTube, we started off doing them on Facebook. I used to drop a video every single day, like a one minute little video every day of these different houses. So. We started off doing house reviews. Then we moved on to car reviews. We started getting more views and all that stuff. So we did some car reviews, but you only can do so many cars. And we had like three dealerships we used to go to. I did have some car reviews. Now, that's why it's called Cars and Cribs. But am I gonna show any cars and cribs? I think it kind of will mess up the YouTube algorithm. So I already don't know if I'm really gonna do this or not. I don't mind doing it. I, I sometimes I just think about so much stuff, guys. You guys have no, no idea. I'm thinking about just making this a vlog channel, but I know that the YouTube is gonna tweak everything and then the views gonna go way down. They already down right now. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but I'm trying to figure it out. So that's pretty much my answer to, are you gonna see some cars and cribs? We do have some cars and some cribs, but you know, it is what it is, baby. I appreciate your question though. Okay, question number four is from at Hummer Guy. He says, do you regret getting the commercial insurance since most of your loads are coming through gig apps? Huge shout out to my guy, Hummer Guy. He always comment on pretty much all the videos and he's very knowledgeable about the industry. So huge shout out to him. I appreciate this question. Honestly, personally, the way I look at it, I maybe look at it a little bit different than everybody else. Um, our insurance is pretty much $550 or $500 and some dollars a month. And the way I look at it is, as long as the carrier company covers, as long as the carrier company has enough loads to pay for the insurance, I really don't mind. I know in the beginning, you're not gonna get as much business as you, as you wanna get. So you just have to get the insurance for now, and then you have to work your way up as you go. Also, it, it also benefits us because when we try to sign up for different carriers or anything, we don't have to worry about getting the insurance, doing all that stuff, we already got the insurance. All we have to do is add them and keep on moving and grooving. Huge shout out to you, I appreciate the question. Um, he also asks, are you planning on getting a DOT or an MC number so you can view the load boards such as DAT, Selectus, and, you know, other ones? Um, honestly, I don't plan on getting a DOT or MC. The only way it's going to, um, the only way I'm going to do that is if it's going to make a drastic change in how much money we're making. So I try to value, I try to go by, um, ROI, return on investment. If I have to get the uh, DOT and the MC number, how much more is it gonna cost me versus how much more am I gonna make? I know that I can get on the low boards and everything, but you also have to do all that paperwork. You have to do a factoring company. You gotta get your factoring company. It's just too much, and I don't wanna deal with all that, baby. I, I'm just gonna be completely honest. I understand that I'm making less money going through the carrier company. The carrier company is making their cut, and I'm making my cut. Um, do I wish that the cut was better? I don't even know they cut. Do I wish the cut was better? Yes, I wish the cut was better. I wish I could make more money. But also, I don't have to deal with the factor company. I don't have to deal with the paperwork. All I gotta do is go drop off the low and get my pockets on swole. So that's just how I look at it. Question number five comes from at Brandon Robinson. And he says, what is the first big gig order you received after buying your Sprinter van? And how many days did it take to get them on a daily basis? Huge shout out to you for the question. Um. The first big gig that we got was, it was on freight, and we was delivering those mail bags. That was the first one we ever had in the van. And then, I, we never got that on a consistent basis. We were supposed to, but I don't know what happened. The guy reached, from freight reached out to us and said, yeah, you did a good job. You want to continue to keep on doing this. And then next thing you know, they started having them. I, I don't know if he found out that the, the, um, the items weren't that big or what. But he started putting it as like an SUV or a pickup truck load instead of the cargo van. So it wasn't worth it for us anymore. They, they I'm talking about, they had crazy miles. 100 miles for uh, $160. Like it was crazy. So we decided not to do that. Um, as far as consistency, 
the first really consistent thing that I ever did with the cargo van was with the Sprinter van was Sunrun. So Sunrun came out with that low for us that one time, and them joints was just consistent. Boom, boom, boom. Steady coming in, coming in, coming in, coming in. So we was getting a lot of money on Sunrun, but it has slowed down for us. I don't know what's going on, but hey, if they hit me up, I'm going to go out there and get it on. Okay, question number six comes from at Mick Crenshaw. And they said, what made you decide to go into the load board industry? Um, I, I, I'm kind of confused on the question. Maybe you asked me what made me start getting, go to the carrier companies instead of doing the gig apps. Um, honestly, I just want to elevate and go to the next level. Really, that's what it is. I don't like staying and doing the same thing over and over. That's another reason why I want to do a dedicated route. I don't like doing the same thing over and over and over and over. I'm all about trying to elevate and go to the next level. Because I understand it is comfortable to stay at whatever you may be doing. But in order for you to grow, you're going to have to get uncomfortable. It's just like when you go to your first day on a new job. Or when you when you was in us, uh, when you was a kid, you could move to a new school and you don't know nobody. It's all about it's all about really growing for me. So that's the reason why I actually went to the carrier company instead of just doing the gig apps. And if they have something else that we can do, I'm definitely gonna add that on so we can go out there and get it on. Um, okay, they also asked, do you have to have commercial insurance to get on the load boards? And can you use any type of vehicle for the load board or do you have to have a large cargo van or a box truck? Um, no, you cannot use any type of vehicle. You have to use a sprinter van, box truck, semis. This pretty cargo van too. Cargo van, sprinter van, box truck, semis. Those are for the vehicles that they use. Um, and you cannot get on there with any other vehicle. They don't even want you to deliver and stuff, even if it's a little bitty box this big. They still want you to pull up in your cargo van or sprinter van. They don't want you uh, driving your car and all that stuff. I know it's going to save on gas, but it might be, look bad on you later on. So you might not want to do that. I understand that you're going to save more money, but. It's not about always saving the money in the beginning. It's about the long haul. So you can go out there and ball and not stall. And yes, to get on the load boards, you do have to have commercial insurance. But I got a little I got a little trick for you. If you sign up with certain carrier companies, you can go through their insurance. And with those carrier companies, they're just going to take the money out of your pay. I don't know if it's going to be weekly, bi-weekly. It depends on the company. Okay, and question number seven. Question number seven. Question number seven. Three of them. Question number seven comes from at Vincent and Nan. Um, is the cargo business worth considering for a first timer? And how do you compare the gas prices to doing this versus the gig app loads? Um, as a first timer, I don't know if you like, you never did no deliveries before, or if, or if you just moving up from doing like DoorDash and everything and moving up to the Sprinter cargo van. I don't really know what you mean by that, but I will say, I'm gonna tell you guys this right now. I'm gonna tell you guys this right now. I need to say this. I don't know if I ever told you this, but I need to tell you guys this. If you do not have any money saved up, do not start this, this business. Do not start it. Don't start doing gig apps. Don't, don't start doing anything. You need to have money saved up. Well, not don't start doing gig apps. What I mean is don't quit your job and then start doing gig apps if you do not have money saved up. And I'm not talking about no $500,000. I'm talking about you need to have at least six months of reserves. Six months of money for you to have uh, saved up for all your bills and all that stuff, just in case it don't work out. It is gonna work out because you're gonna grind hard, but just in case. You need to have the money saved up in order for you to start this business, and whether you're gonna be doing Sprinter van, cargo van, gig apps, uh, car loads, door dash, any of that stuff. You need to have money saved up. If you do not have money saved up, do not do it. Do not do it. I'm telling you right now, do not do it. Um, and what about the comparing gas prices? Now, for the gas prices, Honestly, it's kind of comparable. It's kind of similar. It depends. It depends on you, man. It depends on. For me personally, it's kind of similar anyway because we had to deadhead to get the summer orders and all these different gig app orders anyway. So if I'm deadheading for that or deadheading for the low, it's the same thing. So it's just different pickup locations. So it's kind of hard to answer that question, honestly. The gas prices. I mean, do we base more gas? I think we probably do the same. Maybe a little bit more, but we make more money too. So it's kind of like it's like balance itself out. Question number eight comes from at Google user and they're saying, are you guys noticing that most of the easy cater orders are being posted on various platforms by clients like Bank of America or big entities? Is it easy cater or is it the aggregates like Fuda, Zifty, ParaWorks, etc. posting the assignment for less money? Honestly, I have no clue. Low key, lately, I haven't really been getting any Zifty orders. I only have Zifty, Delivered, and Delivered That. That's only the only three catering apps I have. Um, 
as far as we never deliver to any banks or anything i think that it's easy catering that's what i'm thinking i'm thinking that it's easy catering and the app just lower the price if they want to lower the price it depends on their threshold or how much money they need to make in order for them for their business to be profitable but um i think that mm, it I, easy catering probably have multiple contracts with different companies so whoever whoever get the order that's who it goes to so that's pretty much how it goes that's how i think it goes i'm not 100 percent sure i really don't know much about the apps and everything but i do know that az catering does have multiple different apps that they use like i know for sure that they use deliver that i know for sure that they use deliver too because every time i go into the restaurants i always say i have easy catering order i have an easy catering order that's what it says on the app so it could i don't know what it is honestly i'm just gonna be honest with you. i have no clue question number nine comes from at st0056 what made you choose a new van versus a used one to start out with honestly honestly when we got this van the used ones were just as high as the new ones i can get a, a used one they want a certain amount of money for five or ten thousand more i can get a new one i'm going with the new one every time baby every time i'm going with the new one just off the strength of it's going to be a little bit more money now but it's going to last me longer later and i'm big on i don't know how a person treated their van i don't know what they was doing with it i don't know nothing about none of that so if i can get it new for a five to ten thousand more i would definitely go with that over getting a used one because you don't know how they was driving it you don't know what they was doing in the van you don't know nothing about nothing and you don't want to buy a problem i i'm big on that i'm big on. That. i had a lot a lot a lot of vehicles in my in my days i'm big on buying the problem because if you buy a headache man i'm telling you right now buying a headache is one of the worst things you can do and we need this to make money so i can't be taking a chance on thinking that this may go or may not the joint don't start up i i just don't want to deal with all that so that's the reason why we went with a new one versus a used van but i do want to say this for those of you out there who got a used van or thinking about getting a used van you also can get a great deal right now is if if you're going to buy a van you say that this is what you're going to do right now the prices are lower than they was before so i'm just letting you know the guys know that i'm not telling you go do this go, I'm not, i ain't saying that all i'm saying is this if you plan on buying a van or you're thinking about getting into a van and starting this whole thing right now the prices are lower than they were before that's all i'm gonna say okay question number 10 comes from at, at gig work mama have you ever thought about creating a course huge shout out to at gig work mama huge shout out to everybody who put the questions in the comment section huge shout out to every single one of y'all i know i ain't say shout out to you for this question all the time I don't know what that was. But I know I ain't say huge shout out to everybody every single time. But hey, don't be offended, baby. We are trying to get this money. Now, no, I have never thought about making a course because I do not want those problems with this whole course thing. I don't want to be called a scammer because that's the first thing that they're going to say. The first thing they're going to say is, you know, he's a scammer. That's the first thing they're going to say once it don't work out for them. And the reason why it may not work out for them is because they ain't put the work in. A lot of times people be calling people scammers. Oh, he's a scam. No, 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 it's a scam. All these people be saying this, you're a scammer, you're doing this scam and stuff, and a lot of times they do not put the work in. Now, for those of you who think you're going to skip the line, you think it's going to be easy, and if you go through these courses and all that stuff, at the end of the day, you're still going to have to put the work in, regardless of what you may think or you think you're going to get finesse. And it's not, ain't no finessing, man. You cannot skip the hard work. The hard work is going to have to be done. Whether you're trying to finesse and do it or not finesse and do it, if you're trying to do it the right way or the finesse way, regardless, you're still going to have to put the work in. But as far as doing a course, I don't I don't think I'm ever gonna do a course. I'm just gonna be honest with you because I don't want I ain't trying to hear it. I don't wanna deal with it. You know, people gonna be swearing up and down. Oh with it. I ain't doing it, baby. So as far as courses go, if there is some other people who do courses. I don't know nothing about them. I don't want to do with it. But just I'm just gonna say this. There are some people who've been saying that some of these courses would be scams. But they could but not be putting the work in. So I don't really know. So as far as me doing a course, I don't want no parts in it, baby. I just wanna tell you guys the truth. I don't want any parts in no course. I'm trying to pull up on a new Porsche. Question number 11 comes from at Mike Finelli. And he says, have you thought about upgrading to a box truck? Or are you just going to stay in the Sprinter van and learn how to capitalize in it more? To be honest with you, I honestly have no clue. Honestly, I also have thought about getting a box truck before. I thought about getting a box truck multiple times. I'm like, should I get a box truck? Should I get a box truck? I have thought about it multiple times. I do know it's gonna be more expensive to maintain. It's gonna be diesel and you gotta get the MC, you gotta get the DOT, you gotta do all this other stuff. Yes, I have definitely thought about 
getting a box truck, but I think that it's a time and place for everything. Right now, it's way too early for me to get a, uh, a box truck because I still have to figure this out first. I did that a lot when I was younger. I used to just jump here, boom, 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 jump here, jump here, jump here, jump. I had to stop doing that. Slow down, slow down, slow down. We're gonna figure all, we need to figure this out first. Once we figure out the cargo van, sprinter van, you never know. We may get a box truck, but as of right now, no, but we may in the future. Question number 12 comes from at Big CJ Cargo Van. He says, how in the world do you keep the inside of your van so clean? He hauls paint, cement, mulch, etc., and his van stays dirty. Do you detail yours every day or what? Huge shout out to my guy, Big CJ. If you are not subscribed to his channel, make sure you go ahead and smash that subscribe button. Go ahead and smash the subscribe button and hit the like button on his channel too. So, honestly, what I usually do is, it depends on my day. If I know I got a certain order, I might take the blankets and certain stuff out just so I ain't, it ain't gonna be in my way. And I also have a set place that I put everything, like the ramp, the ramp and the bags, I got it right here. Dolly, I got it right here. So every time I, after I'm done using it, I put it right back. Cause I already know it's gonna be a disaster later on. But sometimes I do have them days. You had them days where you're running and gunning, you uh, picking this up, picking that up, and you already got time. But either in the morning, that night, or in the morning, I try to fix it up because I don't want that stuff in my way. Cause a lot of times it may take a little bit more time to try to move all this stuff when you could have just had it ready and set to go. So you can go out there and scold. Now, as far as like the pallets and stuff, well, sometimes them pallets be breaking on me, baby. I ain't gonna lie. Pallet stuff flying everywhere and all that. Sometimes I do have to, every so often, we probably blow it out like two or three times. We take pause. That was crazy. You take the uh, blower, an air blower, and you just blow everything out of the van. And then that's how I do it sometimes. So that's pretty much what we do for the most part. Question number 13 comes from at 3STKZ. What are consistent gigs for SUVs? You want a consistent gig. I'm gonna give you a gig right now. I'm gonna give you a gig. First off, you can do Amazon Flex. They're gonna do them every day. You also can do GoMo. GoMo, you probably gonna get the best bang for your buck. You can use the SUV with that. Um, also, Roadie is very consistent in my area. I know that some people don't like Roadie. It just depends on where you at. You might have to travel a little bit sometimes in order to get the orders and all that stuff, but they got some, some bigger orders and some smaller orders. So it really depends on your area, but I'm saying go Mo, uh, Amazon Flex, and also add in Roadie. Don't forget one thing. I see, I, I forgot to tell you, baby. Don't forget to all the way spark the, if you got spark in your area, you, I'm sure you do. Get on Spark. You can go out there and get busy on Spark. That's what that was like. Out of all the apps that we've ever had, Spark was by far my favorite. It was super sweet. Spark was the best app that we ever had. We got kicked off, but that was the best app we ever had. So, Spark, Walmart Spark, Amazon Flex, GoMo, and also go ahead and try some Roadie. At Christopher Bien, and he said, What load boards do you use? I don't use any load boards. I do not have a MC or a DOT, so I do not have access to the load boards. What I use is called a carrier company. Now, if you want to learn about a carrier company, I do have a video showing you five different carrier companies you can use. Also, what I recommend you do is go on Indeed. They got them all on there, baby. You're going to go on Indeed. You're going to type in your city and state. You're going to put cargo van or sprinter van, independent contract or something like that, and them joints are going to pop up. So you can go out there and get bucks. I appreciate the question. That was a great question. I get that question all the time, but guess what? We are here on the grind. Question number 15 comes from at Brandon Robinson. What's the best time to look for gigs on Roadie? Um, honestly, me in my area, I think that you got to come in at 520. 520 going to drop. That's the first time when they're going to drop them Home Depot orders. They usually have the larger orders then. And then I would say 920. As of lately, it used to be 520, but now lately, I don't know what's been going on. But around 520s. Them joints been going off for some odd reason. So I would say 520 and 920. I also have a video telling you every time an order is going to drop on Roadie. So what time you need to be looking at it and uh, which stores you're going to go to to pick up the order. So make sure you check out that video so you can put me on the big screen video. Question number 16 comes from at Brandon Robinson again. And he said, how do how does he get to schedule pickups the day before? It depends on what app you use. I don't know what app you're talking about. It it depends on the app. As far as Rody, they usually don't have. If you, that's, that's the same person just asked the last question, right? As far as Rody, they don't have scheduled stuff for the day before. Not that I know of. i never seen it before. I could be wrong, though. Um, Dispatch, Dispatch usually have the summer orders the day before for the most part. They also have some in the morning. So you just got to be at the right spot at the right time because 
they send them out a random time. So I don't really know. I don't have no exact time you need to go here and be here. I don't know. Sometimes I get them joints and sometimes I don't. It's just part of the game. We're going to go out here and do our thing. So what apps allow, What apps have you seen that give you orders for the next day? Oh, yeah. So Dispatch, Freight, and Curry. As far as anything else, I don't really, I, I've never seen any other apps give you the load beforehand. Okay, question number 17 comes from at Christopher Mudd, and he says, what are the three best apps to rent out my cargo van? To rent out? Oh, I'm confused. I'm confused. The three best apps to rent out your cargo van? Or are you saying, I don't know. I don't know about any apps to rent out a cargo van. I don't really know about that. Or if you are saying you want to rent a cargo thing and then do the apps to me personally I'm just gonna be honest with you. I wouldn't do it. That's just me I think that one of my one of my subscribers you shout out to my guy Sam He had a uh, he rented a van to do apps And I think that they were just charging him too much per mile or something like that I can't really remember the full thing. Maybe he can comment below and let you know if he's watching right now But as far as renting a van to do gig apps, I wouldn't I don't think I would do that I think you going I think you ain't gonna make the, as much money as you think you're gonna make. That's just my personal opinion. But if you're talking about apps to rent out your cargo van, I have no clue. I've never done that before. Oh, they do have they do have one that is called Fluid that you can try to use. I don't know if it's an app or not though. I just know that I've seen the vans with the fluid on there before. So maybe you could try that and see if that works for you. I'm not sure. Also, they may have something like similar to Turo. You can Google uh, Turo for cargo vans or something like that, and maybe you could try that out too. Question number 18 comes from at Jake Ham, and he says, are you still in real estate? Absolutely, we're still in real estate. We still have investment properties and we still help people buy. We actually had a closing, that was like two or three weeks ago. Um, second question he asks is, who is your driving partner? My partner is my, my partner is my same part as my real estate partner. Uh, three, what is your favorite app and why? <sighs> Honestly, you want to be completely honest with you? I don't really have a favorite. Oh, uh, as of right now, Rody has been going crazy for the most part. That seems to be the only place where you can get consistent work at. But as, as of lately, for the last three days, they ain't really been having that many Rody orders in our area. But I would say as of right now for me, Rody. But it may be dispatch for other people. It, is, it really depends on your area. So I'm not sure where you are. But for me right now, Rody is. You know I switch F like, 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 like I switch draws. So any given time, it could be gone. So I don't really know. And what's your most profitable app? At the time when we did it, my most profitable app was Spark. When we did Spark, that's what was, that was the most profitable app when we did it. I don't know how it is right now. I ain't did it in, it's probably, it's been at least over a year. So honestly, I really have no clue, but it is what it is, baby. You have to figure out, that's why I tell you guys all the time. All these apps, it depends on your area. There's some apps that I don't have in my area that you guys may have in your area, and there's some apps that I have in my area that may not be in your area. It really all depends on you. So you need to do as much research as possible to find out which app is going to be the most profitable. Question number 19 comes from at Homie Bonsai, and he says, what is your daily driver, and what's your next daily driver going to be? Do you have anything in mind? Oh, you talking about some Whipskies? Honestly... I, one thing about me, see, you talking cars, you gotta get the smile, right? I love me some cars, man. I love, I just love cars. That's my thing. So, Snow, I really don't, to be completely honest with you, I don't really have a daily driver. I just do what I need to do and then go home. That's it. So, we got the Vettachine, the vet ski. We got the van. I'm, I'm gonna say this the van is our daily driver. That's really what it is. The van is a daily driver. We still got Snow White, too. Um, I think I have been giving me, I've been wanting to get another car lately, but I'm not doing that right now. I'm not spending no money. I'm doing, I'm really saving and investing right now. So I'm not really spending no money on another car, but I definitely want another car. And when y'all see, y'all gonna see the car. I'm, I don't know if I'm gonna show y'all though, because I don't know. I'm gonna give me another car, but I'm really into like the Buicks and the Cadillac. I'm really into Buicks. Buick is by far my favorite car. Buick. Not the new Buicks, the older ones, like the between like the like the, the the Buick Park Avenues, I had a Buick Park Avenue Ultra. That was my that was my baby right there. The Buick Park Avenues and stuff like that. Them joints just float. So, but I do like the new cars too. So as far as daily, I don't know what I'm gonna get yet. I'm gonna get some eventually, but not right now. 
I'm still stacking up so I can start investing more. But I really don't know what my next daily driver gonna be because my baby, oh, y'all don't even know about this. I'm telling you a quick story, real, real, real quick. So I had, I told you guys I had a Buick Park Avenue auction. That was my baby. That joint flowed like a butterfly, stayed like a bee. That joint was super, that joint used to drive so good, man. And literally, I y'all don't even have this video. Well, y'all maybe do. Somebody, when I was doing DoorDash, when we first, 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 first started, somebody bagged into it at the green, at, uh, at the light. They bagged into it, and the car was a 97, so they couldn't find the parts for it anymore. So it actually got totaled out, but the car was still driving everything. It still works and everything. But I ain't willing to go through the pain and suffering of going there, doing all this paperwork, doing all this stuff. So they ordered to get it, so I just said, forget it, man. Just go ahead and take it. They gave me you know, a decent amount for it, so I couldn't complain. I had to maintain. Okay, question number 20 comes from at J. Clive, and he's saying, what are some great commercial companies, insurance companies, and do you have a DOT number? And if you don't, why? Um, the great commercial company that I, majority of the people use is Progressive. They do have some other ones. You're going to have to do some research. Go to Google and type in commercial um, insurance places near me or something like that. But we use Progressive as well as By Burke. Now, By Burke, we use that for our general liability insurance. And then we use the auto insurance through uh, Progressive. That's pretty much what everybody uses Progressive. But some people use other things. You just have to find you a deal, a good deal, because in some states it's extremely high. Now, as far as the DOT, no, we do not have a DOT. Do I plan on getting one? As of right now, I really don't plan on getting one. I don't see a, a use of a DOT. Yes, we could go on the low boards and get stuff and all that, but again, I don't want to deal with the paperwork. I don't want to deal with the stress and headaches of the uh, the factoring company. I don't want to deal with all that, man. I'd rather let them deal with it, and then I just get my money, and they get their money and we laugh to the bank like it ain't funny. But, great question. And last but not least, question number 21 comes from at Paul Arnold. And he says that he bought a cargo van 2016 um, Ram Promaster and that when he goes to sign on to the gig apps, he keeps getting put on wait list. How does he get around this? I'm sorry, I have a, some bad news for you, Paul. There is nothing you can do to get around this. Now, you might know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that can help you, but for the most part with the gig gaps, a lot of times you just get put on a waiting list. I did tell you guys before, I'm not sure if you're new to the channel or not, but before you go out there and go get this van or this box truck and all that stuff, have all of your ducks lined up already. So you should have all the apps already just using it in the, as a car. Like you're gonna pick up orders in your car. And then once you get the van, you just switch it over. So get as many apps as you can then you're going to put all of them under your car if you don't have a van yet and then once you get your van then you're going to switch it over so for now what i recommend to you this is up to you if you want to do it or not but you probably should get your dedicated route just so you can start making money in the meantime in between time or if you have money already set aside then you could just wait it out but you never really know when they're going to approve you or not so it's going to take you some time but I would say if you want to, I don't I don't want to, but if you want to, get your dedicated route and do it that way. So that is it. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed making this video for you guys. I appreciate all the love and support. Again, if you are not subscribed, go ahead and smash the subscribe button. Also, do not forget to give me a thumbs up. And if you're a part of the crew, you already know what to do. I ain't even gonna say it no more. If you are a part of the crew, you already know what to do. Comment below and let me know what you got to do, baby. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you lock in tomorrow. It's going back down. We ain't playing around. Because 2023 is still big bag season. We don't keep on giving a reason. I'll see you guys on the next one. We going, we going, we flowing. You already know it. It's DDK, and I'm on my way.